Alright, so in this video we're going to talk about how you can really take advantage of smart objects in the sense that you can build an initial design and completely change the design altogether within a fraction of the time. And that's simply by building a design with smart objects. So we're going to start with a blank document here. On this background layer, I'm going to go ahead and fill this with a color. If I bring up my swatches here, I'm going to go ahead and select this blue background color here. And it's going to Option Delete, or Alt, backspace to fill that layer, the background layer with that color. Then I'm going to create a new layer right above that one. Now using that same foreground blue that I have, I'm going to select my gradient tool. And I want to make sure that I'm going from my color, which is the blue, to transparent, which is the second gradient icon right here. Make sure that's selected. And on that active new layer, I'm going to hold down my shift key and just draw the gradient in from the left to about the middle of the document. Just like that. Now, we don't see anything, of course, because it is, in fact, the same color as my background. But all I'm going to do to change that is simply change the blending mode from normal to multiply. And there we get a nice dark transition there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and merge that down. I'm just going to press Command or Control E. That'll be merged down. That's, that's my whole background right there. I'm going to go and bring in my image in here. Here's the photograph I'm going to bring in to build my design with. I'm just going to take my Move tool, simply Shift-drag it into this new document, and it will place it in the center, just like that. I'm going to bring up my Free Transform, pressing Command or Control T, and I'm just going to scale it in just a little bit more, and we'll do that. Now, before I do anything else to this object, I'm going to go ahead and turn it into a Smart Object. So with that act layer highlighted, go under this Layers menu, and we'll go down to Group into New Smart Object. There. Now I can non-destructively edit this object all I want. So now I'm going to go ahead and make a duplicate of that layer. I'm going to go ahead and turn this one off because I don't need it at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and edit, edit this background one right here. And what I'm going to do with this one is actually first change the blending mode to soft light. So it blends in with that background. But here's the problem. You can see it's getting me a, a slight hint of that color in there. And I want... I almost want it to blend as if it were a grayscale file. Well, I can't really change this to a grayscale doc or a grayscale layer because it will affect every every other instance of this smart object. So, here's a workaround. We're going to create an adjustment layer above it. We'll go over here to my adjustment layer menu, go to hue saturation, and we'll simply push the saturation all the way over to the left and hit okay. Well, here's a small problem. It has basically desaturated every layer beneath it, which includes not only the layer I want to desaturate, but also the background blue. Well, to isolate it to, the only, to just the layer I want it to affect, simply make it a clipping group. Hold down the Option key, or the Alt key. You see we get those two overlapping circles there, and just click once between those layers, and there we have it. Now it's part of a clipping group, it is only affecting that smart object, and not the background. So. All I really need to do now is just, well, just a couple more things. On that image of the girl, to create a layer mask. Get my gradient tool, making sure we're going from black to transparent. And we'll just, like, like we did before, simply draw the gradient in to about the middle of her, of her face. And that's going to allow us to bring in some of that dark area that we created here a minute ago. And then lastly, simply drop the opacity of this layer to about 65%. There, that looks pretty good. So we've got our initial background created. I'm going to go back to this duplicate smart object here. I'm going to bring up my free transform, and we're going to scale this in quite a bit. Move it right about there. Now, I want this to be sitting in a perfect square. You can see this is not a perfect square. And I could go ahead and apply a layer mask to this smart object, but it will not be linked, and it will make it a little difficult to, to keep track of. In fact, I'm going to find it easier to use a clipping group in this case. So I'm going to go over here and get my rectangular marquee. I'll hold down my shift key so it constrains my uh, proportions. I'm just going to draw out a square selection right above that, right above her face here. Then I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to fill that layer with a neutral 50% gray. It almost really doesn't matter what color you fill it with, but gray will do just fine. I will deselect that. I'm going to drag that layer right beneath that smart object and then create the clipping group again by holding the Option key or the Alt key, clicking in between those layers. Now, 
there's my object. I want to create a reflected version of that very object right beneath this one. So I'm going to hold down my Shift key and select both layers. And we'll just kind of position this over a little bit. With both layers highlighted, I'm going to drag them both into the new layer icon, and it will duplicate both layers as you see right here. Again, with them still selected, go under Edit, Transform, and it goes right off screen, but it's right here at the very bottom. It says Flip Vertical. And then we'll simply take the Move tool and drag them till they're just beneath that an original object. Now, I need to gradi gradiate this image so it kind of fades into the background. Well, all I need, really need to do is affect the base layer as part of the clipping group. So I don't really need to apply a, a, a mask to this layer. It only needs to be applied to this layer. So on that gray box layer there, simply apply a layer mask. And again, as we did before, gradient tool going from black to transparent, coming in from the bottom. Holding down that shift key, we'll just drag up just like that. And we'll just come up a little bit more. Then, clicking and highlighting the layer itself, let's simply drop the opacity of this layer down to about 65% as well. So, there we have all our design in place. Now, I'm free to put, of course, put any text or any other content in here as I like, but there's my base images. Well, let's say I've built all this and I want to change it. I want to change that image out. Well, I really don't want to have to go through all this again through applying the masks and placing the images, scaling them, and doing all the clipping groups and everything like that. Well, we don't have to because we have built all this with smart objects. Zoom in a little bit here. So if I've got all this done, to change out the images, to keep all the effects as they are, simply double click on any one of these smart objects right on the smart object icon there. And this will open up that original object in a separate file and simply bring in a new image. Here I have an image of this vehicle right here. It's going to shift drag that file into this file here. And we'll just kind of nudge this into position once it's in place. And, I'm, I, and you can see in the layers, I haven't deleted that original image. It's still there. I can go back to it if I wanted to. I can have as many layers as in this file as I want. So, with that image of the car, I'm simply going to close this document, click Save. I'm going to go back into my original layout and watch what happens. Boom. It has updated every instance of that smart object, leaving me free to do whatever else I want in this file. You see what kind of time saver that is? So, you can simply see by building a design with smart objects, you have a, you're, you're saving yourself a lot of frustration in rebuilding a design altogether. So, there you have it, building designs with smart objects. Give it a try yourself. We'll see you next time.